Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is a video series based on Vicki Borlaug's PowerPoint presentation on mean, median, mode, and mid-range, the measures of center. I wish to thank Mrs. Borlaug for allowing me to use her PowerPoint to create these videos. This is the third video in the series and we will discuss first the mode. Using the same data we used in the previous videos in this series, I can define the mode as the data that occurs most often and more than once. There can be more than one mode. This is important for us as some text will define this differently, but this is the way that we define the mode. If every data only occurs once, then there is no mode. Let's look again at the picture of our data. It becomes easy to see that we have more fours than any other number. The mode is four. To continue in this video, I will discuss mid-range next. Mid-range is not covered by all of our instruct instructors here at Walter State, but extra information has not hurt any of our students yet. Again, our data and a definition and a definition for mid-range. The value that occurs halfway between the high and low data values. To find the mid-range, we take the high number, the low number, add them together and divide by 2 to find halfway between the two numbers. Our high number is 11, our low number is 2, so our mid-range will be 11 plus 2 gives us 13, divided by 2 gives us 6.5. Please pay attention to the order of operations. Now for a graphical picture of that. Keep in mind that when we are looking for the halfway value between our low and high points, here are our high and low points, now to mark halfway between them, which would be 6.5. And the 6.5 is equal distance to the ends of our data, halfway, half the distance from high to low, half the distance from high to low. Notice here that the mid-range is not approximately 50% of the data to the left and 50% of the data to the right. More of the data is in the lower half of the range. Take one last look at the data and as we begin to summarize the data, I want to make this a little bit more real or applicable to a real life situation. So. Let's give the data meaning. Let's say that the data is the ages of children at a daycare center. In this case, the, day, the center has two, excuse me, the center has three two-year-olds, one three-year-old, six four-year-olds, two five-year-olds, four six-year-olds, two ten-year-olds, and two eleven-year-olds. I'm going to summarize the results from all the videos now to wrap up all the concepts together and to relate this to something I will continue to use those ages of children at the daycare center. Mode Mode occurs most often and at least more than once. The daycare has more four-year-olds than any other. The mode is four. Mean. The mean is the balance point 
Remember our two formulas and our mean from the previous video was 5.45. Relating this to the daycare center and the ages of the children, we could say that the average age of the, day, of the children at the daycare center is 5.45 years old. Median. The median is the middle number. Remember to put them in ascending order and find the middle number. The median is 4.5. That would be the age where half of the children are less than four and a half years old and half of the children are older than four and a half years old or approximately half of the children. A daycare might use this to divide their children into two groups of equal size. They could then have two groups of 10 students each and the breaking point would be five and a half years old, or excuse me, four and a half years old. Mid-range. Mid-range is halfway between high and low. High plus low divided by two. The mid-range of the group is 6.5 years old. So how would a daycare use this number? Well, the daycare may want to use this to divide their groups instead of the median. Because instead of using the number of children, it may want to use the ages of the children instead. Think about it. Do you really want a four and a half year old and an 11 year old in the same classroom together? Their activities and interests are completely different. So six and a half may be a better cutoff point to divide your children, even though it doesn't divide the children equally into the same size groups. So all four measures of center have their uses and tell us different things about our data. Again, shutting the video down here to conclude, that does describe very briefly our four measures of center. In the next video, we will look at some other examples and go into some details about some further details about some of the measures of center. Thank you for watching.